Acts chapter 4, beginning at verse 36. And Joseph, who by the apostles was surnamed Barnabas, which is being interpreted the son of consolation, a Levite and of the country of Cyprus, having land, sold it and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. John chapter 12, verse 32. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. Just look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. I need a lift. A lift. There are some testimonies that will only uh, make sense once we have been through the storm. Amen. And so I want you all who have never been through a storm, have never uh, been through a hard time, don't get to boasting about it. Right. Many who say, I never had surgery, I had never been sick a day in my life. Don't, don't, don't start boasting too long. It simply means you haven't been through the storm yet. It means that you really have no strength. You have no stones, no, no strength. You have no deep roots. You haven't been through anything yet. And you really only know what you're made of once you've been through the storm. Howard Thurman, the great theologian, said often in his teaching and preaching, that God has placed not on our heads a crown for which we must spend the rest of our lives uh, trying to obtain, uh, but he has placed above our heads a crown to which we must grow tall enough to wear. Amen. Brothers and sisters, when we are committed to the gospel of Jesus Christ, when we are anointed by God to preach and teach the gospel, you don't have to look for suffering. That's right, that's right. It will come to you in due time. Sometime much sooner than we desire. But that suffering that comes to us, not because we were foolish and made some out of joint decisions or mistakes, but because we allowed God to use our lives for his own glory. So when I struggle, I have to understand that I grow. When I struggle, I have to understand that I become stronger. See, if you would read the first paragraph of Dr. King's um, drum major message that he gave one year before his assassination, uh, he gave this prophetic message against the war in Vietnam. And in that opening paragraph, he makes the statement uh, that often his ministry becomes a vocation of agony. Yeah. And who is eager to sign up for a vocation of agony in a day of prosperity? Yeah. Amen. We live in the day of the prosperity gospel. Name it and claim it. Tag it and bag it. Grab it and nab it. Come on, somebody. And not too many of us are trying to claim a vocation of agony. Sometimes we can learn from certain traditions beyond where we stand in our own tradition. Uh, you know, Gandhi talked about the great social sins, one of which was politics without principle. Another he named was wealth without work. Dr. King said on one occasion, vanity asked, is it popular? Expediency asked, is it safe? Politics asked, is it expedience? But conscience asked, is it right? There comes a time when we must do that which is neither popular nor expedient nor safe, but we must do what is right. And one of the great tragedies of our nation today is found both as we are in the midst of this political season is found both in the Democratic and the Republican Party. Yeah. 
and I know that we have a proclivity as people of color uh, to vote Democratic because we believe that uh, they stand for more of the principles that we believe in, but there are problems with both right. political parties. You see, the Republican Party has lost its conscience. Yeah. It doesn't understand that uh, uh, as much as it talks about one nation under God, uh, it was the, the, the great theologian James Cone that said any authentic theology must affirm that God is on the side of the oppressed. Yeah. And so you can't talk about God if God is not on the side of the poor and the disenfranchised. You can't talk about a God that wants to give tax cuts to rich people and get rid of welfare so poor folk won't have anywhere to go. Come on, somebody. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, so the Republican Party has lost its conscience, but the Democratic Party has lost its courage. Y'all ain't gonna help me in here today. Uh, has lost the courage to stand up and speak what is right and to challenge that which flies in the face of what is right. And there is a cry, there's a cry for the church to be the conscious and the courage in our public policy and our political and our spiritual lives. So we find ourselves here, Sister Martha, in 2012, uh, uh, beat down by the political shenanigans of those uh, who thirst for power but who don't truly care for the people. I heard one political candidate recently say, uh, I can't worry about those people. Y'all ain't gonna help me now. Uh, so we're beat down by uh, the political shenanigans. We find ourselves beat down by high prices that often result in there being more month than money. Am I in the right house? And the two don't ever seem to be able to meet nowhere in between. We're beat down by the cares of life, by the distractions of upward mobility, by the statistics that define our neighborhoods by the racism that is embedded in society, the sickness that often racks our bodies and the confusion that sets in our minds. Beat down and in need of a lift. Is there anybody in here who needs a lift? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I need a lift. And so in our text, in the book of Acts, it talks about a man whose name was Joseph, J-O-S-E-S. -S. His name actually means exalted, uh, which is a derivative of the variation of the name Joseph. And then it talks about Joseph, and then uh, add to his name, his surname is Barnabas. And Barnabas means the son of consolation. So add to the name uh, the son of consolation. Mm -hmm. Consolation speaks of comfort. Yes. It speaks of encouragement. Yes. It speaks of exhortation. It speaks of cheering someone on. It speaks of lifting someone up. Yes. One of the greatest needs in the body of Christ is the ministry of upliftment. Yes. The ministry of encouragement. And too often we want to get into the preaching ministry and the teaching ministry. Anything that puts a microphone in our hand and puts us up in front of people. But I submit to you that the most important ministry is the ministry of encouragement that happens behind closed doors. That telephone call that you make uh, at nighttime nobody knows that you're making. Come on somebody. Uh, uh, that special something that you put in somebody's hand. That word of encouragement that gives somebody the power to make it another day. Life has a way of draining you and sapping you of cheer and joy. And that's before we even talk about the spiritual element of our warfare with the enemy. All around us there are people that are hurting People who feel defeated, people who are discouraged, who are depressed. There are people close to you who feel hopeless and alone and circumstances have beat them down and many of them may be on the verge of giving up. 
They need a word of encouragement. They need to be uplifted. Ask your neighbor, can I get a lift? Can I, can I hear some good news? Every now and then I've, I've heard, oh, I believe it was uh, 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 the witch in uh, the Wiz that said, don't nobody bring me no bad news. <laughs> Is there anybody in here who could use uh, a bit of good news? <laughs> anybody in here who could use uh, a pick-me-up? I'm thankful for the calling that God has placed on my life, but more important than the title of pastor or of prophet, or of evangelist, or of apostle, is the ministry of lifting people. The ministry of helping people, and encouraging people, and inspiring people, and giving people a little bit of hope. See, let me tell you something. You might want to write this one down. People don't care what your title or position is. What people want to know is do you care enough to take a little time and bend down and give them a lift? People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. At one time or another, everyone needs encouragement. There's no need in fooling yourself. I don't care what your title is. I don't care how long you've been saved. I don't care how many people report to you. Uh, everybody needs encouragement here and now and then. Amen. Kings and queens need encouragement. Governors and presidents need encouragement. Pastors and Sunday school teachers, uh, apostles and prophets need encouragement from time to time. We all need to be lifted. We all need to be encouraged. We all need to be inspired, to be infused with a dose of positive feedback. Matter of fact, just give your neighbor a dose. I don't know what you want to tell them, but just tell them something that will lift them up. You're looking bad right now, looking like something going on in your life. Come on now, find something down on the inside of you that you can give to somebody else. Come on, lift them up right now. And see, that was just an exercise because you, you, you have to understand uh, that we don't have any problem or any difficulty at all uh, in, in, in bogging our neighbors down with bad news and junk. Y'all ain't going to help me now. <laughs> If there was a rumor going on, I wouldn't have to tell you, turn to your neighbor and tell them the rumor. Because y'all would have told them the rumor before we got to this point in the service. Uh, y'all ain't going to help me in here today. Uh, but instead of telling them the rumor, why don't you give them some good news? My sisters and my brothers, you may never be an apostle. You may never go to a third world country and preach the gospel. You may never stand in the office of a pastor or evangelist, but you can be a people lifter. Ecclesiastes yeah, 4, 9, and 10 says two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. But if they fall, watch this, the other one will lift his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath not another one to help him up. And I know we often get brawlic and beside ourselves and stick our chest out and say, I don't need nobody else. Well, you ain't fooling nobody but yourself. I believe it was Ralph Ellison that said, no man is an island unto himself. Look at somebody and say, you need somebody. Whether you know it or not, you need somebody. And if you don't feel like you need them now, you're going to need them after a while. Uh, just keep on living. It might be you in the shower saying, I've fallen. <laughs> and I can't get up. <laughs> Help me somebody. Yeah. Two are better than one. I'd rather have somebody by my side that if I fall down. I can get a lift. And I came to this house today to lift you. To tell you that you can make it. To tell somebody that you can do it. To tell you to never 
give up, not to quit, not to throw in the towel, to keep on believing, keep on confessing, keep on praying, keep 